In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to duplicate a sequence. Very useful if you want to have a spare. But what do chunks really do? Well, it allows you to do something called embedded sub-sequencing. So you can have a bunch of different sequences and you can reorganize them in the song mode editor. And I'll be showing you that in a moment, but before we get into anything, I suggest that for each one of your sequences, or sections for that matter, you freeze the tracks. Like me, I have a whole bunch of plugins going. If you freeze the tracks, it might make things a little bit easier. If you're running VIs in each one of these sequences, I'm going to show you in a subsequent tutorial how to use the V-Rack. So don't worry about that for now. Let me just show you this example. I have my bandmates here that want me to repeat certain sections of the song, Take It Slow. They want to have two intros and go right to the bridge and things of that nature. And you can do that by, first of all, duplicating your sequences and do a little creative editing. What I did was I just created my intro and cut out everything after and so on and so forth. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So let's play the chunk called intro, right? So I'm going to just press play here so that we can see that chunk. And here it comes. And as you can see, it starts at bar three. And I'll show you how to change the start time. I'm just doing this for organization purposes because that's the way it works in the sequence naturally. I've erased everything past bar seven. Now I need to make sure the end time corresponds to exactly what kind of music we have in this intro. So I'm going to go here to the mini menu and I'm going to manually end the time. This way when I put these different sequences together they start and stop perfectly and go right into each other. You'll see this later on, don't worry. There we go, that's done. Let's do this for the verse as well. So we're going to play that chunk and that will allow us to see it in the tracks editor. Now our verse starts at bar 7, and I want it to end at bar 14. Let's do the same thing that we just did a moment ago. We'll go to the mini menu, and let's select the end time. And now that it's bolded, we'll just put in bar 14. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the bridge. We might need to clean some stuff up here. All right. Well, the first thing is I don't want the bridge to start up bar one. That's incorrect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the start time of this sequence, right? Or the chunk. And I'm just going to put in bar 14 and press OK. And that's it. And this is mostly for personal organization, right? But the end time is extremely important, right? So I'm just going to select everything after bar 19 here and simply just once I get everything, press delete, right? We can go back there on, make sure that you get everything, right? There we go. We don't need this MIDI here, and it's not even playing anyways. Now let's go ahead and change the end time of the bridge. And we're going to make the end time, you guessed it, bar 19. Just click here. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the chorus. What do we need to do here? If we double click on it, we will see the chorus in another window, but it's not gonna play that chunk because we haven't play enabled that chunk. Let's press play on the chorus, and you'll see in the transport, it will show that the chorus is what's going to be played when we press play on the transport. Very straightforward, I think you get it. Let's close that top window here. And what we're going to do is we're going to clean some stuff up. We're going to expand it a little bit. And I want to snip everything before the chorus, right? Select it all and then press Command and J and we can snip everything. It's really easy to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the start time of the chorus. And let's do that. And here it is, the start time. Let's make that bar 19, right? And I'm going to press Enter. And now I'm just going to get rid of everything after that chorus, just to keep things clean and organized by section, right? Select all that and just press delete. Make sure we got everything, yes. Let's make sure that the end time is correct. And let's set that to bar 30. And now I've divided all of the parts of my song Take It Slow 
into their respective sections. Let's create the song Take It Slow according to the requirements of my band members, right? So I'm going to press OK. And now we have a song, and we can play our embedded subsequences within the song itself, right? We're going to play enable the song, and we have to do a little bit of housekeeping here because the song has its own tempo too, right? And we're going to go here to this mini menu, and we're going to edit the conductor track so it matches the tempo of the song Take It Slow, which has all of these parts that we've created. We're going to press plus here, and 95 BPM is fine from bar one of the song. We're going to press enter, and you can see here that we're playing back song one, and we just need to enable the conductor track, and now it's at 95 BPMs, just the way that we like it. Now we can actually drag these chunks into the song. Let's do this. Oh my goodness. Can't wait. We're going to drag an intro. Let's do that. And the guys in the band want another intro again. There we go. And then they don't want a verse, but they want a bridge. Okay. And then we have a chorus. That's fine. But you know what? They want to have a intro overlapping the chorus after the chorus is played by one bar. They want a one bar overlap. Well, we need to insert a column. Check this out. Here's our column. And I know that I want that overlap at bar 24 of this newly created song. And now we can just drag the chunk to bar 24. And now the chorus and the intro are overlapping. And we're going to add another intro to the end there. And finally, we've created a new song by using chunks in the song editor. Check it out. <laughs> Take it slow 